Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Orlando and today we're gonna jump into real estate versus stock. Which one of these investments is the best investment? So let's just jump right into it. So let's talk about returns. Which one of these investments will make you the most, the very most money? And the answer to that is, it depends. No, I'm just... <laughs> So let's talk about returns. Which one of these investments will make you the most money? That is what everybody wants to know. So the answer to that is stocks. Stocks will 100% make you the most money. But there's something that comes along with allowing you and giving you the opportunity to make the most money. Now, the reason why stocks give you the most money is because stocks can go up 50 to 100% thousands of percent per stock. You know, depending on what stock and how which, how you choose it, how long you hold it, it can just, you know, fluctuate, right? And you can get up to those really crazy numbers. We just saw it happen with Tesla and it happened with Netflix, Apple. You can just go on and on and on with these stocks and the type of return that they will give you. And we also know that the S&P on average is doing, I think it was in 2020, it was, 28%. So you could just see how the numbers are really crazy when it comes to investing in stock. So that is, you mean, in a nutshell, stock is going to beat out real estate. But here is the key factor of the con when it comes to the return of stocks making these crazy numbers is the risk factor. You have a portion in there where the risk of stocks going up and down and also, you know, you got competition, innovation, you know, a key person can make a decision in the company and the stock can plummet. There's just so many different things that you don't really have control over that can make the stock plummet and you can lose everything. You can lose all of your money. So as normal, with having the great reward comes the great risk of losing everything at the snap of a finger. And then on the other side, when it comes to the returns for real estate, the real estate returns are modest. You're probably gonna get somewhere in between 3% to 10% on your return. 10% is high and you will get those numbers if you live in a good area. So yes, then you have the passive income for real estate and the passive income from real estate, it won't compare with the amount of money that you can make in stocks, but it is, it is almost in a sense kind of, I don't wanna say guaranteed because nothing is guaranteed, but it's definitely more for sure. And there's definitely a lot less risk with the real estate than it is with the stocks. Which one of these investments is harder to start? The answer to that is real estate is harder to start than stocks. Stocks are very easy to get into, especially with um, these new apps. You got Robinhood, M1 Finance, Webull. I mean, all of these apps now allow you to jump into just trading stocks like immediately. Even, you don't even have to come up with the full amount of a share that you want. You can buy fractional shares. So you can do that. I mean, it's just so many ways that you can get into stocks now at a very cheap price. I mean, $5 and you can just basically just get in and buy what you want in the market. You really can't beat that when you're just trying to get into it. You're just trying to get into it. On the other side, you have real estate, which is take some seed money to get into. You're gonna need about 20% to really get into a property and an investment property. And let's just say it's a $100,000 property. You're gonna need about $20,000. Now, a lot of people don't have $20,000, and that is the reason why real estate is harder to get into, because you need that amount of money. Now, let's talk about the kind of gray area here. The gray area would be that you are definitely getting more bang for your buck with real estate than you would on stock. With real estate, you're going to get leverage. Leverage, you're going to put down $20,000 to buy a $100,000 asset. You can't get that with stock. If you put in $20,000, you're going to get $20,000 in shares. That's just the way it works. So there is a little asterisk there, but 
I mean, let's just talk plain English. If, if it's just to get in and start, most younger people, most people take a long time to save up 20 grand or 20%. It takes them a long time to do that. And even though real estate is trying to bring in so many programs to bring in a lower down payment, as we know with the 2008 financial crisis, it's not really a good idea for everyone to be able to kind of get into real estate with no money down. It makes this bubble happen, which happened in 2008. When it explodes, you know what happens. It happened in, in, in 2008. So it's going to be hard to get into real estate if you, you know, if you don't save up money. Okay, so number three, let's talk about taxes. Okay, so who wins in this one? Real estate or stocks? Real estate definitely wins in this one. Okay, so the reason why real estate wins when it comes to taxes is that there's just so many ways that the tax code is written to help real estate investors. I mean, you have depreciation, you have, you can write off your expenses, you actually get to write off the interest on your mortgages. And then on top of that, you can avoid capital gain taxes by doing 1031 exchanges, which you get to start all over again and avoid taxes all the way around for the rest of your life. <laughs> I mean, that's just what it is. And then on the stock side, let's just say you took $5 and you turned it into $100,000. Well, right now all you have is paper showing that the stock that you own is worth now $100,000. You need to sell that to turn that into cash. Once you sell that, you will get hit with capital gains. There is no if, ands, and buts about it. There is no way to get around it. You will have to pay capital gains tax. So that's that. Capital gains tax, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's probably in the 20s. 20, 25% area, maybe higher than that. But the point is, is that there is just no way to get around taxes on stocks. Whereas with real estate, it is encouraged, <laughs> you know, so there you go. So number four, I'm going to put two together, uh, tangibility and liquidity. Now who wins this? Well, real estate wins in the tangibility portion. And then as far as liquidity goes, stock wins in that one. So What's the deal with both of these? Well, in real estate, you can touch, feel, smell, walk through, you can see your investment. And that is very important to me and to other people who prefer to actually be able to see their investment. And then the other side of it, when it comes to stock, you obviously can't see it. It's just kind of on your phone or in the brokerage account showing that you own that actual stock. There isn't anything that you really can touch or just say, uh, look, this is mine. I mean, you could have a piece of paper maybe print it out, but you know, that's highly unlikely in this day and age. So you basically just have what's on your brokerage account and the numbers going up and down. Versus real estate, you actually have that tangibility of that touch, feel, smell, walk through type of investment asset. And then on the liquidity side, well, stock wins on this portion because you can sell your asset at any point, given time, any time of the day, anything, and the money will be right there in your account in one to three days. You cannot do this with real estate. With real estate, it takes time to sell, 30 to 60 days to sell, and then you gotta go through the whole process of selling it. So it's just not a snap of the finger. If something happens, I need to pull the money out. This even is the case if you're trying to refinance or do a HELOC or whatever the situation is. If you're trying to pull money out, it's going going to take time. And it's normally going to be about a 30 to 60 day wait before you see your money. And that's just the way it is. So in both of these assets, you know, it's equal. Stock wins on the liquidity side and real estate wins on the tangibility side. So, I mean, as you've seen, I've went through these four reasons why you should choose stock versus you should choose real estate. And as you can see, stock came out as the winner. Stock came out as the winner as something that, you know, based on these criteria, you know, that you should jump into. So the question is, is Orlando, why are you such a big real estate guy versus a stock guy? And the answer is, is just what I just presented to you. Just because I presented to you that these points that I just went over are 
favor towards stock does not mean that stock is the right investment for you. Our real estate is the exact investment for you. It is a personal decision, guys, at the end of the day. For me, I am a more conservative individual, so stock is a little bit too rich for my blood, seeing things go up and down. I need to have a little bit more control, and I'm willing to take a lower return on my money so that I have more control over my investment. Now, I do believe there is a great thing when you have diversity over your investments. So for me, I prefer to jump into real estate, get that going, and then start investing into stock to diversify. I prefer that method than just investing in stock or just investing in real estate. I like to play both sides. I just prefer to do the real estate first because I have more control. I know where my money, how my money's gonna grow. Does it grow slower than it would in stock? Yeah, yeah. But also too, I could have made bad investments in stock and had no money. <laughs> Whereas in real estate, I know exactly what I'm investing in and I don't have to worry about waking up tomorrow in the house or the property that I invested into being gone or losing half of its value, as in stock. But also, if you invest in stock, maybe you're okay with the risk of possibly losing half, but then also gaining 200% in return. It really just depends. And the reason why I wanted to do this video to kind of show you that even though I'm a real estate guy, I do understand that you can make more money in the stock market. It's just that I'm a more conservative individual and I just don't like to take the risk. There's just a lot of deal killers in stock for me that I just, as starting off, I wasn't willing to risk because for me, it just took me so long to get where I am now. I just don't want to risk losing it. Not at the snap of a finger. That's just for me. There's a lot of people, like I said earlier, that have no problem with that type of risk. So once again, guys, if you got value out of this content, please hit that subscribe button, notification, and like button. It really helps out my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.